It is my pleasure to introduce Keith, of course. He has been with us for 24 of the 25 conferences. <laughs> when we went through New York, he was in California and couldn't make it. He was a visual signee uh, for the Southern Land Institute and a member of the Mission Group. And uh, yes, uh, Keith and I in his life have been operating together since 1980. So those early eighties were an important time, both for the founding of Masonry and for the what led to all of this. Um, I'll just be very brief because I don't want to take any of his time. He gets to the point. He has a connection. He knows what's responsible, what responsible activity is in light of the hierarchy. His doing is uh, full through me all the way. <laughs> Come on, and clap. I mean, what do you <laughs> Let that much as below be as that much as above. I'm uh, beginning with this um, AUM keynote. Actually, I'm the keynote of uh, masonry from the New Age because actually this is most interesting, but masonry is uh, given by the DK as the, the um, higher mode of teaching truth on the fourth ray. So, and it has a relationship to the second ray mode of teaching truth uh, by the system of initiation as taught by the hierarchy. So I thought what I might do for a change, if I ever can get to it anyway, <coughs> which I haven't really done much, is maybe um, uh, speak somewhat about masonry, may not for recruitment or anything like that, but because there are so many questions about it these days, there's a lot of interest in it, <coughs> and uh, so it's more informative, and it, and as it has a lot to do with the fortune and humanity's uh, destiny, I thought um, maybe clear up some misconceptions. <coughs> some uh, you might be interested to know that. Um, uh, the uh, on Google, some uh, among the top ten uh, hits they have are uh, meditation and astrology, uh, which gives an idea of the pulse of humanity, and also pornography. So if you can get those three relating to each other somehow, work together, you got it all figured out. <laughs> um, and then also masonry is a, is a big hit these days. Just like some of my music, you know, my greatest hits. <coughs> so, um, but before going further, anyway, I wish to thank the uh, USR again for inviting me for the 25th. I was right at the beginning in the barn, or where was it, Michael? It was a barn. So we were born in the manger. <coughs> <laughs> And um, uh, uh, so these are all wonderful events, and so I'm going to put a few cents here, and that is uh, that um, uh, there's no date for next year's conference, you might have noticed. Now, you, uh, usually on my way out of here, I book my room for the next year, and I don't have a date to do that. And that's because they're pondering about it. They're in a bit of a crisis. So I would appeal to all of you, if it means something, then cough up so that they can continue doing this year after year, because I'm sure you will value it. And there's nothing else really quite like it, is there, in terms of conferences, where at least we can all you know, participate and share with each other in common themes and inspire each other somewhat uh, for the coming year and for the period of being together. And this is uh, probably significant because um, you know the history of all these conferences has been a kind of arrival at harmony through conflict. If you know what went on in the early days, <coughs> I'll tell you. <coughs> so we have one through, and it's become, there's no purpose in conflict if it doesn't eventuate in harmony. And that's obvious what's happening now, in spite of Michael's attempts to stir you all up in the meditation and make you look for your conflicts. Anyway, <coughs> it's, uh, it keeps putting this music, play conflict music. I don't know what that is in terms of this, anyway. So, anyway. But it is a very harmonious setting, and so uh, we've uh, arrived at something, so let's continue. And if you want this to continue, uh, cough up whatever you can, and also 
offer your assistance and aid because they need it badly. And then we can continue all of these things until we're dead, until the last man standing, or until we pass it on to a, a, a younger group, which um, anyone below 50 will do, I think, at the moment. <laughs> We all started this when we were late twenties, early thirties, you know, but um, we still are, really. <coughs> anyway, so I thought I'd just uh, put that in because they might not ask you, and they not because they forgot to, it's just they're being you know, humble about it. So I don't need to be. So I'm no, not. I don't have to. I can speak up for them. So get on with it. Make sure we're here next year. Okay. Now. In, in this subject, I've got a huge amount of stuff to go through, and I probably won't do it. But um, uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, in talking about all this, we're talking about symbols. And, and, and whenever one has to talk in terms of symbols, uh, we're all, uh, just about everything I'm going to say from now on is going to be symbolic, really. And the same with anyone. If you use words, you're already using a symbol. And um, so when we do that, we're always placing something between ourselves and reality itself. It's something protective, interpretive, and significant, but something nevertheless veiling and hiding. So we can't say this is it, <coughs> and or our, uh, our perception of it is it, really, uh, because um, uh, our perceptions are all interceptors of truth anyway. And, and that's okay, it's better to have good illusions and bad ones anyway. And, and so uh, our, uh, everything we give is in the realm of, of, uh, of some kind of symbol. Words, either written or spoken, are symbols of something indicating the thought. And so the thought generators are the things that we have to try to arrive at in, in, in more of the understanding. Now, I can't read my notes at all, so it's a good job I had to go at memorizing it. <coughs> Um, now, now I, I will deal uh, somewhat with the fourth rail, although it's been dealt with a lot, but it's, it's significant in this in terms of un understanding <coughs> somewhat <coughs> the um, uh, uh, right at the beginning. One has to uh, put this in perspective. And, and uh, so the doctrine of emanations helps us understand the uh, uh, somewhat the <coughs> Um, uh, 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 the, the, the source of our being. We, we seem to separate all the uh, divisions of principles and, and planes and all that, not realizing that it is uh, essentially part of the one life in its uh, various grades, but from a central source of emanation radiating what we call outwards, <coughs> although it's not really. But uh, really it's, it's uh, somewhat of the of the divine parabramic type, uh, type of realm of being, which is uh, uh, non, you can't qualify it in any way. And, and in its emanation of, of its beingness nature, then we have this uh, radiation uh, to the uh, outermost sphere but of, of, its, of its light. <coughs> so um, what we per perceive as a, as, a, as a sphere of anything is not from the outside in, it's it's the extent of the radiation from the inside out, and we live right on the outside of it, and so uh, in this emanatory uh, field, it's uh, <coughs> um, it it uh, every aspect you see of the, of the soul or more accurately the unified spiritual aggregate called the real man, the real identity, is uh, is. Uh, divided, uh, as you know, with spirit, soul, and body initially, but then uh, in, in, in terms of a fivefold uh, being. <coughs> the first two, the spirit and the divine soul, are, they're, they're all vehicles, one for principles. And so these are envelopes. <coughs> the first two are regarded as, uh, as, as uh, non-qualified, non and then the others uh, become the earthly qualities of, of men personal and qualitative. So the, um, the uh, 
this, this envelope of the conception of our earthly mind um, in conjunction with the activity of our five senses, uh, and our five sense organs, obscures the pure divine mind and with the gross earthly conceptions and transforms every truth into a mirage. Now, in this, um, uh, this doctrine of emanations is, is one of the most important to uh, grasp in our uh, thinking along this line. Oh, are these what's working on this? Okay. I moved. Uh, because uh, our tendency is to go from the bottom up rather than from the inside out, <coughs> and also uh, to identify initially with our realm of being, the real uh, being that we are, and and then approach uh, the spiritual path from that point. That is, uh, from that point of central being, and then understanding some of the processes of our of, of withdrawing or absorbing back to the source. We tend to approach it from the, in, the outside in and therefore um, a, a, a place a personal pronoun at the center of the whole thing. <coughs> and, uh, and so uh, somewhat perceive what we think is spiritual as our uh, already illusory conceptions and attribute that to an inest rather than and change the perception to come from an, uh, the inside looking out from that point of light. <coughs> um, and, and so in, uh, the, in it, what we can understand through this is that the principle of um, <coughs> the principle of a plane expresses itself through the plane below it. Not necessarily it impacts the plane below it through radiation. And this is important for us to understand because really uh, Atma impresses Bodhi and Bodhi impresses the mind. And there's our whole uh, battleground, as it were, uh, the, the, the whole objective for man is to become the intuitive being that he essentially is as a spiritual soul. So in that sense, you see, there's something of, of a combination of first and second ray energies in, in the intuition. It's not just a, it's not simply a fourth ray thing, that's the mediating factor of it, but there's these two aspects, first and second ray, that go towards the intuition, the direct perception, uh, which is, uh, 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 <coughs> which has no uh, duality whatsoever, and is uh, uh, cognized by directly perceiving consciousness of consciousness and object, where there's no distinction between the two. <coughs> and not only that, but things are perceived in their right condition of being and not uh, with one's perception or conception or misperception about it. So, <coughs> uh, the spiritual soul, really, uh, which I think, anyways, the solar angel, they emanated forth and, and, uh, and took their place upon the plane of yoga. And, so the spiritual soul uh, anchored itself on the plane of buddhi, and it's the emanation from that, uh, from the spiritual soul of the solar angel, really. Um, uh, uh, it's emanatory, it, it, electricity, it ignited the spark of individualization in the souls, and they become individualites. So uh, the spiritual soul is buddhi, I see it anyway, it's the solar angel, and the human soul is light. And so uh, what we have between that really is the overshadowing Christ in each and every one of us. That is the whole myth of the Christian thing. The solar angel is the, is the uh, overshadowing Christ in all of us on the plane of buddhi, and the soul itself is that already a master of the third aspect, although we have to bring that into some fusion between us, and is, uh, is, is, is uh, fusing uh, this energy of buddhi in, uh, in its effort to become master at this point in time. <coughs> yeah, that is the objective in the, in the human uh, effort, anyway, to fuse these two aspects. Excuse me if I'm uh, uh, trying to work through this because I'm working it out as I go along. <laughs> so, um, that's, this, I think, anyway, somewhat the seed of the, 
of the uh, esoteric understanding of the new world religion. All of us are you know, Christ in the making, you see, because we all have it, we always have. It's in the place we least suspect to find it, in our hearts. <coughs> so, the, uh, this um, effort is, is illustrated somewhat in masonry, and I'll get to that in, uh, later, but it's the, uh, uh, it's the master workman instructing the apprentice, solar angel, as it were, instructing the apprentice, even though the soul and the solar angel are one. That's, uh, that can be said only in its oneness, that is eye to eye on its own plane. From our point of view, I think there is uh, something to be understood about the nature of their yeah, interplay, only for the purposes of understanding and not as it exists in reality itself. All of our um, training is, is somewhat in concepts and all that, so that we can erect a conceptual framework. Otherwise, we go mad <coughs> on the way to uh, enlightenment. We need a conceptual framework in order to build, erect the consciousness and understanding, and then when the building and the temple is raised, and the, the scaffolding is all taken down. You don't need it anymore, because one sees and is in the light. Now, uh, the quality of spirituality is love. And the quality of divinity is will. And the mediating principle, that which relates the two qualities, is wisdom. Buddhi itself. Buddhi is the divine uh, uh, mirror, in a sense. It is, this, uh, it is this fusing, linking principle of wisdom, Buddhi. Actually, the Hindu name for Mercury is Buddhi, isn't it? This fusing, blending energy can bring together love and will, soul and monad. So that's quite a different factor that, uh, uh, that begins to emerge with a, a much uh, greater stage of development. Now, inherent in all intelligent substance, the chitta. Chitta is present not only on the mental uh, plane, but it's, it's, every, it's in all the bodies because it's intelligent substance. And within that, there's light itself. It's light, essentially, and uh, one can draw forth from that light within the wisdom potentiality of all intelligences. And it's that aspect that goes into the uh, transformation of our, uh, of our being, of our vehicles, as we, uh, whatever, and, and, um, and through a process of the sanctification of substance. And so, uh, eventually, we get the emergence of that light to reveal an inner beauty. Now, I don't have time to go into the whole body chitta generation, but some of you know about it anyway. But that's the process whereby uh, the chitta is transformed into into a body at one uh, 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 from one point of view, and a very profound one of that. <coughs> And so, um, uh, uh, that engages the work of the inner builder in masonry. The builder really is the soul within, the soul of Petri. <clears throat> Working upon the material of which it's given, of which you're all aware, because being students of the Age of Wisdom, and uh, uh, in the process of uh, applying uh, the tools of masonry in a symbolic manner, and uh, uh, the work upon the material by the soul within. Now, uh, I'll get to masonry more specifically in a minute. <coughs> the, um, so one has uh, the de descending energies of, of principles and uh, which absorb the uh, prepared material and the ascending efforts of raising states of matter to approximate states of consciousness. And so, uh, in order to evoke uh, the energies uh, of the lie beyond our normal awareness, when we talk of the will, and uh, we really don't know what we're talking about, really, because it's beyond consciousness as we know it. We can formulate concepts and symbols to express certain understanding of it, <clears throat> but it's uh, that uh, uh, principle of awareness which replaces consciousness or mind as we normally know it, 
uh, once a person has passed the third initiation and, be, and participates in the divine life. So, he does live and move within the being, and he has his being within that being, and he sees uh, things as they are because he's seen through. He participates in that life and is an aspect of that life. That's the safe ground, and, and that's one we can probably say that that's the goal, the immediate goal for all of us over the next many lives, however it takes or whatever. That is the immediate goal. Once past that, one is, uh, can be relied upon, not in terms of what one will do, but what one won't do anyway. And so um, uh, through, <coughs> uh, through such material, uh, the material then is, is a receptacle. It's, it's expressive for this inner light of being. So the um, initiate can then not only express uh, intelligence, the light of intelligence and, and the love of the soul, but also uh, the will as life. Which, again, we have no idea what we're talking about when we're talking about that, because um, but we, we should talk about it anyway in order to help with the understanding. <coughs> I'm not saying this condescending manner, but just to... Uh, um, uh, uh, just to somewhat clarify the processes, because sometimes um, we do talk about things as if uh, as if uh, as if we actually know, and uh, and one has to embody the whole thing. When when you know it, we will all know. You know, <coughs> it would be self-evident. And but anyway, we we should still talk about these things in order to refine and clarify our consciousness about them. When, now, uh, as we know, the will is evoked. It's not invoked. It's not aspired to. There's no. Uh, there's nothing you can do <coughs> except uh, present similarities. We have to present within ourselves uh, similarities in order for the energy of the world to be evoked. And uh, that comes first through a purification, which is really the absence of any limitation. And then we are a pure a vehicle through which the electricity of that energy can make contact with the uh, physical plane mechanism and thereby ignite it, actually. <coughs> and then the whole new process begins. But the whole new process of awareness begins, too, because one enters into uh, uh, a participation in the divine life. One is no longer uh, considering one's relationship to it, but... By, but by virtue of identification with it, one is able to actualize and express it. <coughs> uh, in, in certain manners. And then, you know, face the next part, which is always a bit tough. Now, uh, so presentation of similarities is really important. That means we prepare the vehicle. What um, is uh, really significant in the... Uh, uh, Dissertation or the, the main uh, edict of the mystery scores is the evolution of the of the spiritual being on its own plane. So, uh, for that, uh, that's the main factor, not not the necessarily struggling man, but the evolution of the soul on its own plane, the spiritual being, and that we have to learn to identify with first in order to understand its uh, immediate objectives. For any incarnation, we have the rising sign, you know, to help us understand that for, for that life, anyway, at least, and maybe several. <coughs> now, this whole uh, factor of way four, again, in terms of, uh, of uh, another thing brought up uh, on, on the first day by Michael, mathematical exactitude. We've understood that somewhat as, the, um, as, as, as a, perf a perfection of symmetry, a geometric perfection. Basically, it is a, it is a matter of vibratory synchronicity. The matter of this uh, particular um, field has to be prepared through sound, through color, through light, to vibrate synchronistically which that with that which is above. That mathematical exactitude produces order uh, um, above and below through vibration, through sound. It's all through sound. It's all through um, light. <coughs> it's all uh, 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 our sense, our light we see is refractions, it's color, it's veiled. But in order to uh, bring about within ourselves the necessary um, <coughs> preparation of the material, then uh, uh, it's done primarily through sound. 
when we say, uh, when we talk about uh, such things, it, it, it one can't ignore the factor of vibration in the material. It's all vibratory response to contact. And uh, so I realize these are deep things and need much going into, which I can't at the moment, or I could, but I don't have time. And, uh, but uh, on, the, on the Buddha plane, we have this archetypal realm of the patterning of the heavens. But this is essentially a realm of sound. It is hearing, you see. <clears throat> and uh, we hear, but we don't always listen. Listening is the seed of obedience. So when we learn to listen properly and obey, then uh, we will follow. Now, this, um, uh, this <coughs> uh, listening, in a sense, is to the, into a template vibrating at a certain rate and uh, in conjunction with the pattern of things to be. And in our vehicles, we shape and mold them through uh, incarnation after incarnation, or they are reabsorbed and we work on them. And so it's a two-way thing, really, until such time as, uh, as there comes a synchronicity between vibration. There's a vibratory uh, sound through the a joyful noise unto the Lord through the vehicle, which, um, through which uh, the energies, the spiritual energies of the triad, which are the um, natural state of awareness for the initiate, are able to express themselves unfettered because they've been purified, you see, through the absence of any limitation. So, vibrational symmetry is the whole uh, factor of, of, of beauty. <coughs> that is, uh, in a faltery sense. Now, I'm going to skip over lots of things and just uh, um, try to get a little bit in <coughs> about uh, uh, this is all broken up, I realize, not very clear. Maybe it is, if you can follow. The, um, uh, you've heard probably a lot about masonry and the ancient mysteries, you know, Dan Brown made the biggest thing about it, and there's a lot of talk about it. Actually, no one knows what that means and why. So, uh, but there are lots of questions about it. It's easy to say, but no one clarifies it. Dan Brown didn't even clarify in his books. He probably doesn't know. He's not a mason. So <coughs> that's what happens. Anyway, it, was got, it got things a jump starting anyway. But um, you see, in all the mystery schools of all, the mysteries were dramatized. And so you see that fourthly thread of that significant mode of teaching going through all the mystery schools of past ages. The mysteries were dramatized for the, uh, the neophytes or the uh, those in uh, studying within mystery schools, and they had to intuitively try to understand uh, through through the drama presented to them certain factors about the ancient mysteries. And um, now, uh, just about the only system in the world uh, still existing in which uh, in which uh, that is summarized, that is in the way it was from uh, Greece and Egypt and all, because you know this whole Masonic lineage is. It's ancient. It's, 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 pri it's still the dramatization of the primordial religion as taught to humanity by the hierarchy, in a sense. Passing through all the mystery schools and the different names and all that. And, but uh, primarily uh, uh, a factor of dramatization of the mysteries, which is a whole forfrey mode of listening and learning and understanding through repeated seeing, because it does need repeated seeing. The unique thing about masonry, even though it may look completely <coughs> unlikely to anyone looking from the outside, because uh, is the fact that it has preserved that teaching. It has preserved the whole, all the teaching about all the initiations and the process that we undergo uh, to go the, to uh, achieve the goal, and uh, it, that's why DK emphasizes it so much because it's a place where the mysteries will be externalized, as you've probably read about. And that's uh, one of the main reasons why. It already is the, the home of the mysteries because uh, the mysteries are dramatized through it. Each, or uh, in any what we've done, we've taken the whole thing apart and put it back together again, little brick by little brick, <coughs> cemented together with love. <coughs> and, and it's been a tremendous... Uh, piece of labor I've been at it since 77, gathering all the forces and pulling it together. 
And so we had to take the whole thing apart and put it all back together, eliminate the unessential, keep the essential, change the wording, revise everything. Uh, our, our guide all the way through, it was a lot of correspondences. If something didn't correspond to something internal and a reality, then we tossed it out. So I fired quite a lot of officers, no longer needed. <coughs> we just dumped in there by the efforts of interference over the many centuries. <coughs> Anyway, so we refined everything. We brought it down to essentials. We rearranged things. We restructured things, rewrote and recomposed all the rituals and everything. And so we have a system of, of the fivefold initiations that a person has to go through through the three degrees. The three degrees really relate or are symbolic of the uh, three crosses of the zodiac. So I couldn't have put this all together if it didn't have esoteric astrology to help. That was the main symbolic thing which I could use in order to uh, we relate everything. This is some huge book of relationships, really, isn't it? <coughs> and so, uh, and 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 the myths and the and and the way things are portrayed in order to convey uh, this understanding of of the uh, of of the, uh, uh, the the drama of the candidate going through the mysteries. In 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 reality, really, it's the drama of the Christ consciousness through evolving through the medium of the form. It's really about the soul. It's not about the personality. The drama that one sees in it is the drama of the soul taking form and shaping and molding it until it until it brings it back to the place of light. The drama of the candidate is that of an obedient candidate listening and obeying. <coughs> and and so uh, it's it's really uh, it's it's very deeply esoteric, although. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there about esoteric masonry. And all. We don't proclaim to be that because it's not really. At the moment, esoteric is world energy and forces, and we're learning to do that. But we can't claim to be um, esoteric uh, because we're still students of it, and we're learning in group form how to do this and experimenting as we go. Um, <coughs> I could speak for ages about this, but I'm not allowed to. Uh, I'm just going to give you loads of Masonic secrets, but there isn't time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, at lunch, there's going to be a big table then. <laughs> so, um, uh, the <coughs> now, the, 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 this uh, so much to uh, try to understand in the whole process. I can, we can understand what it looks like to the common consciousness, you know, not a part of it, and why it could appear to be a bunch of old guys, oversized, and not allowing women. But we do, we finish with all that. AUM has both, as you know. And so uh, we're we looking past all that sake. What we're involved in this reformation of the whole thing, and um, <coughs> and uh, 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 bringing all the uh, 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 things to light within it. The um, <coughs> The, uh, I might mention uh, one uh, uh, part of it. Uh, there's, um, there's a, a phrase in that to, at the opening where it's a secondary part of a secondary uh, purpose where it says all things came into being truly within whose uh, light we walk. And uh, that relates very much to this whole thing of emanations. If we see from the source, you're saying, um, uh, from that inner point of light as it radiates outwards, we can see that really uh, the end, where we live, that uh, part, uh, the Mula Prakriti, which is not separate from uh, Parabrahman, which is part of the whole thing, is the emanation from the causeless one that uh, as we uh, come to the edge of that uh, circumference, then uh, it, it's, it's because it's the end of the the radiation of light. It's, non, it's not separated from the uh, center, but only by our consciousness. And, <clears throat> and so uh, the, uh, uh, the effort of withdrawing the consciousness within and, and seeing that as we do, one veil uh, uh, drops uh, away bit by bit from that outer kind of cord as we move into the center. And so uh, the sphere of any uh, being, really, we all are spheres, is the extent of our radiation. And the same is true of a being, 
uh, spirit net or whatever. It's only by virtue of uh, this radiatory thing and, and those of us who live on the edge of it that it, it has any <coughs> any uh, seeming uh, uh, type of uh, duality, but it's not really. It's only by our illusion, illusory something, you see, the illusions that we uh, give to it. <coughs> so our objective is to withdraw again uh, within. Now, in, in putting all this AUM stuff together, we had loads of, uh, of thought forms, interceptors of truth to, to break through, including our own. Because <coughs> we were all, the startup group anyway, we were all masons coming from different orders, and we all had our conditioning through being masons. And so uh, uh, we had to take apart every little piece of it and investigate, can we do this, you see? Cause there's, like in all things, you think there's this invisible realm of overseers looking down, telling you, no, you can't. You see, you can't do that all the time. Uh, our conscience tells us that, or something in us tells us that we can't do this or we can't do that. And it was the same in putting together uh, this thing. Even Masons would say, well, you can't do that. And we said, well, we did. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we did. And they said, well, you can't. We said, well, we did. Look, come and see. <clears throat> Somewhere they, there's this uh, idea that, you know, a bunch of, uh, of, of saints put all this together somewhere. It is originally. But then, uh, like this country, the Constitution, you know, they have a bunch of kind of slave earning, uh, you know, tough bunch of guys, you know, having brilliant thoughts about something. But they fought and argued a lot, just like we have. And they came to something. So uh, things have to be revised from time to time. And it's the same with also <coughs> with, um, uh, uh, with putting together or taking apart something that exists but has longevity and a lineage and, and is worth salvaging. I mean, it's the same in music, you know. You just uh, learn from the past and, and then build uh, what, what is to come upon the benefits of the past. You don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. So it's the same in our uh, efforts in this. It was so interesting because we would spend sometimes a couple of years on, on a big question. And uh, they were big questions for us because we were Masons and we knew that we, that could, we could likely be you know, locked away <coughs> or something from punished. And uh, there was, I remember, a huge... There was a huge crisis at one point, spiritual crisis, that is, that I had to make a decision about something. And so I called around to the core group, I called Michael, and I said, well, look, you know, we, this is a big thing, but are we going to do it, or what? Or, or, and, uh, I mean, if we do, because yeah, everything to, from then on rested on that decision. And he said, well, um, I'll just go with you, Brother David, whatever you decide. You know, so I called two of the others, and they all said the same thing. <coughs> no, right behind you, right behind you, don't worry about it. <coughs> you decide, we'll be right there with you, you see. So I had to write it down, and I said, okay, I'm going to do this. It's a, it's a big change, so if it's not right, you better interrupt me with a phone call or just do anything. Any sign, please, just let me know it's wrong. Okay, I'm writing it now. Here's the first bit. Right, I'm giving you three more seconds, counting very slowly, and then, and then, right, I finished, that's it then, sorry. <laughs> so we put the whole thing t together, you know, and, and lots of times we had to do this. The point of saying, saying this, oh, how kind, is, is, um, uh, never mind. <laughs> the um, point of all this is that, um, uh, all of us are having veils in front of us, which we are um, afraid to step through. And and uh, really the, the whole symbolism of, of, of uh, the Buddhic nature really is a, is a door, isn't it? A, a veil to step through, a two-leaf door or whatever, or more, or a, 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 a five-pointed star. And these are all doors leading to somewhere, or deep uh, blue, or an eye, or triangle. These are doorways entering into something. And each time we had to make a decision within um, piecing together the bits of masonry, you know, it was, we spent hours in debate um, for and against, you know, how can we justify this to Mason? What are they going to do to us and all that? Because, <coughs> um, you know, we have to 
consider all of that being legitimate with the larger Masonic fraternity. We're not just a bunch of rebels, you know, we do, we're working on behalf of the rege regeneration of the whole thing. So <clears throat> each time we would go, we'd, you know, come across the next thing or another thing, you know, to have to sort out in order to strip it and renew it. And sometimes we'd debate it for hours and then finally we would um, vote or they would all be looking to me for the decision again, like, yeah, we're right behind you, don't worry, whatever you say, it's fine with us. <clears throat> So we would decide on something, and as soon as we had, it was again like just stepping through a veil. You see, there was nothing there other than the illusion of our thought forms, which presented us, prevented us from moving on. Once we step, we stepped through it. Oh, what's? Why was it so difficult? <clears throat> and we step back again and say, sure. It's like. So why why was it so difficult? It's easy to walk through. Really, once you do it, you can leave all behind, and you see that it was nothing but a veil of, of 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 illusory thought forms. It had no reality, no real existence, no real existence apart from our vitalizing its existence itself. And that's much the same with our um, efforts on the path. <coughs> um, uh, there, you know, we have these veils. We have to understand what the next veil is for us to step through and, and just see if we can walk through it. It takes a tremendous amount of courage, we initially think, but once we've done it, we wonder, why did that hold me up for so many lives? <laughs> it wasn't that difficult after all, you know, and, um, and it's just uh, uh, somehow we are imprisoned by our own um, thought on. So, um, they, uh, they brought them very kind to me and, and donating extra minutes. That's because I did the money thing, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, and so anyway, I just invite you all um, and with us uh, to step through the next veil, step through the door and into uh, a realm of, um, <clears throat> uh, and then we will reveal the inner beauty together through that door. And I thank you all very much, then, and all the board.